Mrs. Elizabeth uh, School Board's meeting of Tuesday, November 9, 1999. Um, the first item on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We're now uh, taking a look at the agenda. Are there any adjustments to be made to the agenda? Um, moving on to approval of the uh, board meeting minutes for October, um, for the October meeting. Any corrections? Um, I'm gonna move on uh, then to communications. Communication items. Um, I do, you know, I do have um, a couple of things, and uh, if somebody can help me with the date, um, there was a uh, um, a meeting uh, with the school board and the administrative council on our goal setting meeting. What date was that? It was the workshop. The workshop, right? Twenty sixth, October twenty sixth. The twenty sixth of October. Um, and I just wanted to uh, provide some general communication on that. I really think that that was um, a meeting that reflected um, a tremendous amount of work that was done by the, the staffs of uh, each of the schools. And um, I think we are uh, off to a good start in terms of, um, of uh, working uh, uh, very, in a very positive and very collaborative way in terms of goal setting, and I think we have some ambitious goals set for the year, um, but it's nice to see um, uh, much energy generated at each of the schools in terms of um, the goal setting. So we do appreciate the, the good work that was involved um, uh, with the staffs on uh, developing those. The second item that I have is in terms of communication, and it was something that um, we had continued some communication on. Uh, it was a, um, a, a lawsuit uh, that was uh, something that we needed um, to keep the public updated about, and uh, more recently there has been um, a judgment uh, provided that we've received notice of, um, and that has to do with the, uh, the case Ann Ridge uh, plaintiff versus the Cape Elizabeth School Department. Um, the judgment is, and it's a, two sentences, I'll read that just for the record. On October 27, 1999, Judge Jean Carter entered his memorandum of decision and order granting defendant's motion for a summary judgment. Accordingly, judgment is hereby entered in favor of Cape Elizabeth School Department and against Ann Ridge. Uh, there is still an appeal uh, process um, and a, a, a time period for an appeal. Um, but that is the update so far on that case. Other items or comments? Um, yeah. Real quickly, I'd like to congratulate all the students who participated in fall athletics and or co-curricular activities and the way they uh, comported themselves in representing Cape Elizabeth. Um, I also want to thank all the coaches and faculty advisors for their hard work with those students. That's good. Thank you. Um, we have a, a special item on the agenda this evening, and it uh, is uh, recognition. And I guess we'll do this uh, from the podium. Yes. have an opportunity uh, this evening to recognize a staff member for an outstanding accomplishment. Uh, we're very fortunate in the district to uh, have one of our members who have uh, received a significant award, uh, not only for the accomplishment, but there was a monetary gain by the district because of uh, this person's efforts. And uh, it is something that I know the district appreciates very much. Uh, I'd like to turn it over to, to George and uh, to call Gail Parker. Um, this uh, recognition is uh, the Cape Elizabeth School Board uh, presenting this award for outstanding accomplishment to Gail Parker um, in recognition of your outstanding accomplishment as an educator at the Cape Elizabeth Middle School, 
as evidenced by um, your selection as a winner in the National Semiconductor Internet Innovator Awards Program. Um, and this is uh, presented to you in appreciation um, by the school board. Yeah. I did not wear my sweats since this time. Thank you. I was informed that this was coming. Um, this is really a tremendous opportunity. I think one of the things that it validates is all the time that has been spent and the money that has been spent by the school board over the years to try to put capability in our hands to use technology. If the technology hadn't been there, I couldn't have begun to use it. If I couldn't have begun to use it, my students couldn't have begun to use it, and we couldn't have put together this site, which ended up with this award. It couldn't have been done with just computers in the lab. It could not have been, this, the unit which earned this award could only have been done by having the computer with that capability in my classroom available for the kids to use. And them to have the skills in terms of word processing that they got by coming up through the computer program. So I think as, um, although I'm happy to keep my, my check and will not be <laughs> donating it. <laughs> uh, I'm very glad that it does also give money to the school system because without the school system support over the years, it, it wouldn't have been possible. So I also thank the school for the chance to have done that. And I hope that everyone will visit the website and maybe even some other schools as we begin to get the word out from National Semiconductor to maybe hook some other schools into doing some of the same and connecting to it. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Yeah. What, you should tell people what that website is. Oh, is this a test to see if I can remember? <laughs> um, it is capehs.k12.me.us, and that will get you to the school site. If you want to go directly to the website, then you add a backslash T walls for talking walls, which is the book it was based on. And thank you. I did find out, by the way, I was in the computer lab today and just for kicks tried a regular internet search using talking walls and on InfoSeq, anyone who types in talking walls can find our website will come up. So that's good to know that it's beginning to get out in the search engines. We've had 560 some hits so far. Thank you very much. That's great. Thank you, Gail. Um, I did see a couple of panicky looks as I moved down the agenda and skipped um, uh, one piece, a very important piece, and that is the uh, comments from our representatives from uh, the middle and high school. And um, we'll start with our middle school representatives. Uh, first, I'd like to bring up that the fifth and sixth graders had a social and it was very successful. And at the social, they had like games and stuff in the gym and stuff like that. And um, fifth graders are coming to our student council meetings starting a few weeks ago to see what it's like and to see if they want to run and to report back to their schools what they're doing. And they also the sixth grade, they collected $640 for Halloween UNICEF. And uh, also for the social, they had a Thanksgiving canned food drive, and it's for the homeless and stuff. And Sally, we had the Sally Foster gift wrap sale, and we made $50,000, so the school got to keep $25,000. And we're having a meeting tomorrow where, uh, for best practices equals caring, competent community, and four of our eighth grade students Anna Metzger, uh, Leslie Preddy, and uh, Brianne Flynn and Jacqueline Crane are starting out by telling them what our school is like and why we think it's a good community. And, and yesterday, the eighth grade went to Chuanki for a day of helping them clean their campsites and getting, rem getting them ready for the winter. And auditions for the Honors Festival for seventh and eighth grade are Tuesday, November 16th, and the rehearsal is going to be on March 3rd, and the performance on March 4th. 
Um, seventh graders are getting ready to go to Camp Kiev for a week, and they're leaving on November 29th and returning on December 3rd. <coughs> Boys basketball is the only sport going on now, and it just started. Their first game is Wednesday, November 17th. And on December 8th, the sixth grade band, fifth and sixth grade chorus, seventh grade jazz band are having their first concert. And December 15th, the seventh and eighth grade band and chorus and the eighth grade jazz band are having their first concert. And Mr. Strout's advisory went to the soup kitchen. Um, 13 people went to the Portland soup kitchen and they helped serve food and clean the tables on Tuesday November 2nd. <laughs> okay, um, other questions for our middle school reps? Quick question, Anna, what, was the, what are the tryouts for? The Honors, um, the Honors Festival. Festival for band and chorus. For the seventh and eighth graders, I think. Yeah, yeah. Other questions? Good job, thank you very much. Our high school representatives. All right, um, as Mr. Sweeney mentioned, the fall sports season is now over. Um, officially ended with the girls' soccer victory on Saturday. They are now the state champions. Um, and the golf team also won the state championship. You heard last time that Alyssa Hayes did very well individually, and they also won the team championship. Field hockey had a good season. They ended with 9-4 record. Boys soccer uh, lost in the Western Maine semifinals and they ended with a 10-5 record. Uh, boys cross country, unfortunately they didn't make it to the state meet as a team, though they performed well throughout the entire season. But the top two runners uh, made it individually to the state meet and they both finished in the top 10 in the Class B in the states. And they are going on to the New England championship, which is this Saturday. In girls, we made it to states as a team, which is the first time since I've been in high school. Um, and unfortunately, we had some injury problems, so we didn't do as well as we would have hoped. But we did finish fifth as a team, which is very good. And we were the Western Maine Conference champions. And our top runner was fifth overall in the state. And she will also be going on to the New England championships this Saturday. Uh, winter sports practices will start November 22nd. and. Last year, I don't know if you, any of you know, the junior or last year's sophomore class sponsored a five versus five football tournament for a fundraiser. And it was very pop popular and a lot of people had a lot of fun. So we're doing it again this year. And it started yesterday and it's going to be going on this week. So it's just a fun thing to do. So we're all enjoying it. Um, for other activities, uh, the 19 musicians were accepted into the Southern Maine uh, Jazz Band and Concert Band. And of these, five were the top scores within their respective instruments. So we all did really well. And the all-state auditions for the all-state band, orchestra, and chorus are this Saturday. And chorus and select choir will be attending an all-day choral festival next Thursday at Mesolonsky High School. And this is the first time that a chorus from Cape has attended this festival. So our program is really growing. I'm glad to see it. Uh, the math team had a home meet last Wednesday, and we were second. Uh, mock trial won its first round, which was last week sometime, I think, against Deering, and they beat us last year, so we were very happy. It was a tough meet, very close, but we won. So the next week, we'll be going on to the second round, which will be next Friday in Augusta. The speech team has had three meets so far, and they've been very, some very successful individuals. And the theater, actors, and Mr. Mullen are working very hard to prepare for the show, which is next weekend, next Thursday, Friday, and Sunday. And finally, we are, the entire school is involved in a Thanksgiving uh, community service project. Each class through the YWCA program has adopted a family and is providing um, necessary household goods and also food to give them a good Thanksgiving to a family that otherwise might not be able to have one. So the entire school is involved in that. Hello. Um, on the 29th of October, the SAC, um, we uh, built a uh, haunted house in the Pond Cove for the annual Halloween gathering. And so that was a success. Um, and then 
as you know, we've done a lot of facilitator training um, in correlation with the eighth grade. But now what we would like to do is to expand that into the uh, high school. So we're going to get like 25 more um, people, and we're going to train them with uh, get to prepare them for facilitator training. And our goal is to um, make more, have more leadership roles in the school. But this facilitator training will also allow us to have more group discussions on a group and a school-wide level. And our goal is to break every, like the school down into 10 people a group. And so uh, there'll be one facilitator for every 10 people. And we can have uh, group discussions on a school-wide level. And um, it's another thing. And then college, uh, for us seniors, um, the college application process is occurring right now. Um, we have colleges visiting us on a uh, daily basis. So uh, it's kind of colleges uh, knocking. And so um, that's about it. Any questions? Okay. Questions? I think we're all set. Thank you very much. Good job. We're going to move on to the superintendent's report. Uh, one item that I'd like to bring up at the, is just to give you an update on the workshop planned for the 22nd of November. Presently, we have close to 250 individuals, so our number is, is where we'd like it to be that will be participating. Um, we've had a good um, number of parents who have called and would like to get involved. Um, we did some advertising in the newspaper and on the website, and we did get, even get quite a few responses from the website for people who would like to participate. There is a planning committee um, that will be a group that would meet at the probably in January, and they would meet for a full day retreat, as I explained. Uh, when I present the, mat the materials at the last meeting. There are parents, uh, teachers, um, um, our business partner that would be involved with this group, and they would actually look at creating the strategies and then taking a look at what kinds of action plans might be needed. Um, it's important also to have, at this level, um, school board participation. Um, but I think it's important, too, to have uh, all of you have an awareness of what's happening with this process. Uh, so different ways we can approach, approach that particular issue um, by having two individuals that would be permanent members of the committee. Uh, those two people would, again, have that, that knowledge um, and then could explain it to the rest of the group. Or we could have a system where uh, there might be two people that go to the first all-day retreat um, and then to other people who might be able to go to the next one so that the entire board kind of is aware of what's happening uh, because it's such an important process as we plan for the future of the district. Obviously, you can't have all seven members of the board, but I think if we come up with a rotating process, then each of you would have an opportunity, two members at a time, to attend uh, the retreats and the planning sessions. There would only be, in any given year, two retreats, um, and we would have a rotation system anyway, but this way would, would probably help uh, the entire board really have an awareness of what the action plans are what, and what the strategies are. Um, so what, what I would need to have is those two people who would like to be involved. And I don't know, if George, if you'd want to appoint them or what the process would be, but we need two people for the first uh, retreat. And we don't have a specific date for that yet, so it needs probably be some people who have some flexibility in their schedules. I guess um, th what I'd need to hear is who has an interest in doing that, and can it's um, w uh, do we have an approximate t uh, time? Well, there is an orient there. The one thing we do have is an orientation for that team is scheduled for uh, November 15th. It's an evening session uh, from. Uh, probably about 90 minutes, starting at 7 o'clock, and it's going to be held in the high school library. So all the members of the team would meet on that night. And the facilitator for the large-scale workshop would be there uh, and go over the activities for that particular workshop. So two, two people, the ones that can make that, would also then participate in the first full-day retreat. Okay. I guess I'd just like to hear from board members who has a, an interest, and then we'll, um, we'll decide immediately after this meeting and, and, um, and identify, too, who will uh, begin the participation. I have an interest, but we don't know a date, the date in January. Of the full day? Right. Not, not at the present time, no. A lot depends on when the facilitator can be there. Is there a location been determined? For the retreat? Mm. 
No, that's Hawaii, Florida. Probably yeah. more, a little more local than that. Yeah, they, but you bring up some good they ideas. Volunteers, <laughs> if you put it where it's going to be warm. Uh, you keep mentioning the name a facilitator. Do we have a name for the facilitator? We have uh, Linda Gatimus will be the facilitator for the workshop on the 22nd. Um, one of the reasons we're holding off um, because some of the planning on who that facilitator would be, would, some of it might have to do with how that workshop goes and what the needs are. Um, our business partner has some expertise in that area and might help us with the facilitation of that group, um, but we're not, we're not sure of that yet. Um, are there others who want, would like, who have some interest, Marie? Mm -hmm. John? Okay. Um, we'll get two names to you. Another issue, just to update you on, there has been some discussion um, regarding playgrounds. I know the Pond Cove Parent Association has been raising some funds regarding playground needs at that school, um, and in doing so, there also came to light needs throughout the community. So an informational meeting was held um, with Mike McGovern uh, and some of the Pond Cove parents and some of the administrators, Ernie McVeigh, Pauline, myself, Sue Weatherby, uh, to take a look at the issue and maybe what, what needs to happen. What came out of that meeting um, was um, on the town side, uh, Mike McGovern is going to bring to the town council uh, a request for a, them to appoint uh, a committee on a town-wide basis um, because the needs of the town uh, as far as playgrounds go hand in hand with the needs of the school and just what are the, the priorities. Um, there would be representation uh, from the parent associations at the different levels. Um, there would be representation on the administrative side or someone representing the schools. Um, but it would be the town that would appoint and give the charge to the committee to take a look at playgrounds because I know there's been a lot of interest in that. Um, but more, rather than competing against one another, uh, the idea would be to set some priorities and then to take a look at funding and how things can, can happen as far as budgets and, and fundraising and, and put a whole package together. Um, and that's the update on as far as playgrounds. I know a couple of you were at that meeting. Any questions on that? Um, and the last item was just a discussion of the workshop date so everyone, so everyone is clear. The, um, the workshop for November will be on November 30th um, and will be in regards to facilities and facility needs for the district. Okay. Um, what we'll do is move on to the principal's reports and we'll start with uh, Tom. Good evening. Oh, Peter, you're not going to leave. No, we'll do that. Um, we'll be starting uh, the next round of the MEAs at the end of the month in writing, reading, and health. And since at our workshop two weeks ago, you expressed a pretty fervent desire to hear more about it, I thought I'd give you a little bit of background about what we're hearing from last year's MEA and what we're going to do this year. Um, some changes this year in the reporting, which will be new this year, there will be no longer any scaled scores. The, um, the scores you've traditionally seen in the Sunday paper, which are 350 and 400, which compare schools, those are going to be replaced by uh, performance level scores or achievement, achievement levels. We'll also no longer have the um, comparison bands, which try to inject some demographics into the scores. So in my opinion, that's a good move. It'll, it'll be more on student results on, the, on learning results. The individual results, student results, and the school results are not yet back. We should have those in January. But partly to help us prepare for this year's MEA, we've received item level class reports, which is also new. Um, last year, the test was changed to, from strictly open response to multiple choice and constructed response and all kinds of different things. The, the data we've received so far, just to alert you, is useful more for the educators than for parents, uh, um, and I'll tell you why in a second. It, um, we have individual scores and averages in all the core disciplines, math, English language arts, uh, science, and social studies. That data, performance data for science and social studies is new. We've never had it. We've only had uh, 
uh, general scores in the past. We also have scoring guides which are annotated to highlight the performance indicator so we can check back on the scores, look at the test and see how kids did on that. Now you want to know what the value is. So far, um, there are, there's an instant value uh, since the MEAs were criticized pretty roundly last year for the content of the questions. We can look back at the common item questions. If we see that an average score or that a lot of kids missed a particular question, then the teachers can go back and look at that question and say, good question, bad question, are we teaching this? So it gives a, ch a chance to see that. Since we have so much data, we can look back and see if there's any trend uh, in the student responses. Do we better, do better on multiple choice? Do we do better on constructive responses? When kids are missing questions in multiple choice, is there a pattern in the wrong answers? Is, is there something that uh, we should be doing as educators to help uh, prepare them better. It's also, it's, it, it's a timely arrival of this information because it helps teachers and kids prepare for the test themselves, I think in a fair way, to see the format and in some way know what the uh, standards are. The, the samples of student answers too give us an idea of what student performance should be on the learning results. So when, when we see what a good answer is in science and social studies and English language arts and we look at the performance indicator, it's not too hard to translate that to uh, classroom expectations. Um, we've also gotten, this is new this year, we have all the student responses back on the, on the writing prompt. It's come back on a CD. Uh, clearly this was before the judge issued some opinions on Microsoft because it's on Windows, unfortunately. There aren't many elementary schools that have Windows. But Gary Lenoy has um, managed a way to convert that CD to, um, to Mac, which means, again, the teachers can look at the, all the uh, data they have in the writing samples, which, which also give feedback on strengths and weaknesses, go back and check the actual student writing and see if we agree or disagree. It would also be worth our time, if we have the time, to take some of the student writing and score it ourselves without checking the score to see if we agree with what the uh, evaluators did. So th that's a lot of data we've had. We haven't had a, a lot of chance, a lot of opportunity to look at it yet. I've farmed it out to the grade four team. And we've been talking about it, but I think the whole school knows that we're all implicated in this. If we see a trend in any of these course subjects, we would then expand the conversation, and we certainly will, all the way down through kindergarten. Another major event at Con Pond Cove, something we know worked and was really good, but we can't quite measure it. We has a, had a Harry Potter day two weeks ago, and there got rave reviews, and I think it was just one of those activities that struck people's fancies, and um, we just had a good time. And it was all based on, uh, if you haven't heard of Harry Potter yet, I'm not sure where you've been, but it, we really had a very enjoyable day. The high school representatives mentioned the Fall Fest. I appreciate the time they put into making a really scary haunted house. I think my daughter actually cried this week, uh, that week. I understand from PCPA that they sold 1,100 entry tickets to that event. It was on the Friday night before Halloween. And uh, thanks again to the PCPA for the book sale, which uh, grossed almost $15,000 this year. And they're all good books. Any questions? Questions or comments? I heard good things about the Harry Potter. <laughs> I missed it. There was somebody else there you know, <laughs> in charge for the day, but I heard it was good. Also, just back to the MEA, I think this was in the Sunday paper two Sundays ago, and it's a pretty fair summary of where the state is going with the MEA. I hope that helps. Okay. Thank you, Tom. You're welcome. Um, high school, Pete. Elizabeth and John did such a good job, they stole several of the uh, items. I do want to make one correction. Uh, Elizabeth mentioned that we had 19 students selected for the Southern Maine Music Festival. Uh, and I believe the numbers that I have are that seven of them, uh, rather than five, uh, earned the highest scores in their particular category. So that a student could be rated highest score in trumpet or highest in alto sax, highest in trombone and so forth. And uh, we did have 19, but, but the numbers that I have uh, indicate that seven of those students, uh, again, uh, very strong results. Uh, 
I suspect uh, that, that uh, we have more students participating in the Southern Maine Music Festival than any of the other schools uh, in the area or that are participating in the Southern Maine Music Festival. Uh, we have two focuses for the uh, report today, our world language program and the, <coughs> uh, and the arts. Uh, I'd like to first, if you remember last spring, uh, those of you who were on the board at that time approved uh, an exchange trip, a French exchange trip. Uh, David Perry and I have been talking recently about the updates on that and uh, David said he'd be glad to come and provide an update uh, for you tonight. So I'd like to ask David to take the microphone at this time. Good evening and thank you for giving me some time to give you an update as to where we are on our trip. Um, I have 10 students who will be traveling with me in early February for three weeks, taking two weeks of school and one week of February vacation to go to Saint-Nazaire, which is at the mouth of the Loire Valley, Valley um, in central France on the Atlantic Ocean. Uh, I have one senior, three juniors, and six sophomores who will be going with me. Um, we are starting our our organization of that, the price of the trip is falling within the ranges that I had projected last year, and we are working hard to keep, the, keep it within those limits. Um, I will be meeting with parents and students on Thursday night. We're so dedicated to this, we're taking Thursday night to meet. Um, and uh, at that time, we'll be going over some paperwork that we need to get going. Uh, my counterparts on the other side have organized a group of 12 students who will come back and see us in April. Uh, therefore, I am looking for two families that can host uh, these extra students when they come over for two weeks of school and one week of April vacation. Um, between now and our departure date, I'll have two or three orientation meetings with the students and give them a crash course in culture shock and what to do and what not to do. And, and hopefully this will be a wonderful experience. It could not happen without your support. It could not happen without the faculty's support because obviously um, losing 10 members of the school for two weeks is going to put a load on them and trying to keep them, keep the teachers trying to keep those students uh, current with what work is being done. Um, do you have any questions at this point? Thank you very much. I'll send you a postcard. Um, <laughs> bon voyage, monsieur. Merci. <laughs> David, I wonder if, um, if you could uh, maybe put a challenge to the participants to, um, to see what they could do to uh, give the board um, maybe a five-minute update at some point or so, a five-minute uh, um, overview of the experience, and they can sort of be as creative if, as, as they would like. But, um, Once we return? I, yes. Oh, sure. Um, it, it, that would be, I think it would be fun for us to hear um, about the experience. Is that possible? Oh, easily. Good. David, are you looking, are you looking for um, families with high school students? Preferably. Okay. Other questions for David? Thank you. Thank you. Have fun. Thanks, David. Uh, also, uh, returning to the theme of the, uh, of the arts, uh, I would invite any of you to uh, come over uh, if you have time during this uh, this next week, uh, Richard Roethlisberger and Mary Hart, our two uh, visual arts uh, instructors, have been doing a great job and have for years uh, of having student work uh, up and about in the eye of the public and in the eye of fellow students. And uh, today, in particular, um, a new exhibit went up in the three. Uh, three main areas right there in the main entryway and then, and then also by the uh, library. And most of the, the work that just went up is uh, from the various photography classes. Uh, it is stunning. There, there are, especially the advanced, uh, I mean, all of the work is, is, is good. The advanced photography classes have been doing self-portraits. Um, they, are, they are absolutely amazing, I think, in their creativity. Uh, in there. It's a stunning exhibit, so I invite you to come on over uh, and take a look. They've done all kinds of interesting things in looking at themselves. We have a student who walks on water, or at least levitates on water. Uh, we have... Uh, uh, oh, it's, it's, I'll, let, I'll let you come over and take a look at it. I, I would invite you to do so, and I'd like to thank Richard, Mary, and all the students that are, that are willing to have their work uh, on display so that their fellow students and people in the town can see the types of things that they're capable of. Uh, 
It was already mentioned the fall play, uh, but I just want to emphasize one piece of that. That is November 18th, 19th, and 21st. The 21st will be the uh, matinee, the two o'clock performance. The other two will be evening performances. Uh, but again, it, it, uh, similar to last year, it is a student written uh, and student directed under the supervision of uh, Dick Mullen uh, performance uh, that has become, I, I think it's getting close to being a tradition. Uh, I think it's been something like three out of the last four or five years that, that the fall uh, production has uh, been a student written. Uh, I think that provides a tremendous opportunity for our students to have that kind of uh, faith in them to, to produce something that, uh, that, they, that they really feel excited about. Uh, and then to turn it over to them to direct also uh, with expert supervision and coaching, uh, I think uh, is, a, is a great experience. So I hope that people can make it to at least one of those uh, performances. Pete, what time of the evening performances? I was afraid you would say that because they're <laughs> different. Uh, I think uh, Thursday night, I believe, is 7.30 and Friday night, I believe, is 8 o'clock. Um, Will it be on the public service board? I imagine uh, it, it, uh, it, it generally is. Uh, I, uh, I'll, I'll call and let you know, but to all those people oh. that are listening, <laughs> I, I, I believe it's, and I didn't write this down in my calendar, I believe it's 7.30 on Thursday. <laughs> uh, I, I'm afraid that it might be 7 on Thursday. That's the thing that I'm, I, I, uh, Friday night I'm quite sure is 8, but uh, Thursday is either 7 or 7.30. I should have written that down. Um, so the, the arts, uh, the, the, you know, as I, as I mentioned, I wanted to focus a little bit uh, this evening uh, on the arts. They certainly are alive and very, very well uh, in the high school. Uh, on a Less happy note, uh, did at the very end of last week, I think you have copies of the uh, letters that uh, uh, I brought over on Monday, but at the very end of last week, I did receive two letters of resignation. Uh, one from Stephanie Betzelt, uh, guidance secretary, who has been secretary for 16 years, uh, has done a wonderful job uh, in that position. She's been the person that has uh, kind of overseen all of the uh, college applications, uh, all of that material, uh, as well as functioning as uh, kind of the registrar uh, of the office. She was actively recruited and uh, found a position that was very exciting uh, to her. I don't blame her. It's, it, it is a, a, a very exciting, sounds like a very exciting position. So we're very happy for her, uh, selfishly uh, unhappy to, to see her go. Uh, and also uh, received a letter of resignation from uh, Spanish teacher Shelley Tucker, who uh, is going to be moving back to California with her family. Uh, they, she will be staying on until uh, December. We have begun the process of uh, uh, looking for a replacement uh, already, uh, but we're very sad to see her go already. She, Shelley just uh, uh, came to Cape this year. I think that's it. Is there any questions? Quick comment. I happened to be in the high school today and saw the, uh, the new exhibit, and it really is extraordinary, and I would urge everybody to try and drop in and see it. Really wonderful work. Just a comment, just in, in terms of uh, Shelley's decision to return to California. Um, it's a loss of a Spanish teacher, but also a loss of uh, um, a great uh, coach for field hockey. Uh, she did a great job this past season. I agree. Any questions for Pete? Thank you very much. And uh, last. Just quickly, I didn't repeat the, the, uh, the material that Tom mentioned uh, regarding the MEA. We have that same information. I just didn't want to repeat all of that, but the same types of information have arrived at the uh, high school. So. Great. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and last but not least, middle school, Nancy. Thank you. Good evening. <clears throat> we also have all that information on the MEAs, uh, but Tom did an excellent job giving you an overview of it. I will tell you that on November 23rd, which is one of our workshop days, part of that day, we will be meeting in some subject area groups to go over some of that material. It gives us in the middle school an excellent opportunity to own the eighth grade 
MEAs because they take MEAs in the fourth grade and then again in the eighth grade, so it gives us a really good span of time um, to look at things and to inform our practice with this. At this particular time, as we've looked over what we have, what it's most meaningful for us is probably informing some of our instructional practice and changes that we might make in instructional strategies um, to con from content specific ideas to perhaps just strategies about helping students be more thorough in answering constructed response and those are the ones that short answer kinds of questions um, to do that. So those are just some of the generic responses at this time but we'll get more specific later on. One of the great advantages of having school board reporters from the students come is that as a principal you then don't have that much to say. Uh, they do a great job. But I'm not sure if perhaps it's a plot that you came up with to cut Pete and I, who both tend to be rather long-winded, um, down to shorter speeches and that you'd rather listen to the young people. We understand that and we support them and they do a tremendous job. So Leslie and Anna filled you in on lots of things that were going on in the middle school. Just a couple of points of clarification. One thing is the money that was collected from, for UNICEF, I believe it was $641, was collected by our fifth grade students and they worked on that project very willingly. They explained to you how successful our five through, eight, five through eight Sally Foster gift wrap sale had been, and specifically what it's helping with us first and foremost is our Kiev t tuition. Um, those letters went home with students last night, and Kiev costs originally $150 per camper. This year, each student contribution will be $42, and that's an improvement from last year when each student contribution was $64. So they did a wonderful job um, getting that down. And then our next big tuition payment will be um, to Chiwanki, which will come in May, and we're working towards that, and they already have a great start. So the Sally Foster gift wrap, and then the money that you passed in the budget um, the $5,000, and when we talked at budget time, I thought that would be more going towards Kiev because it didn't have as big a fundraiser around it. But this year, we worked as a five through eight, and so we split that $5,000, and $2,500 of it has gone to Kiev, and $2,500 will go to Chiwanki. The girls also reminded you of our, our winter concerts, and we will be sending you invitations, and if any of you can make those two nights, it's great. They are at the high school, and they start at 7 p.m., um, many times parents always wonder why do we go to the high school and not the middle school and it's for a wonderful reason and the wonderful reason is our bands are much too large to fit on our stage so that is the reason we always have to um, go to the high school because we can fit into the gymnasium so it's wonderful that we're too large the last date that we met for the workshop our seventh and eighth grade chorus met for an evening practice I'm happy to report to you that the evening practice occurred because they are much too large to meet at one time together during school. And our, that hasn't always been true of our choral programs, but Joanne Lee has done a wonderful job of building that program gradually. They had an evening practice, I think, I'll probably get this wrong, but I think the seventh graders brought desserts and the eighth graders brought casseroles, or it was the other way around. They all enjoyed food, um, had a good time, had a wonderful job time singing together and practicing and parents supported it and many of the parents stayed for the rehearsal so it was a great opportunity for them to get together and celebrate. One of the new things that we're starting in the middle school to bring you up to date with is we did have two parents who are going to be joining our team leadership teams for one meeting per month and that will be the meeting that occurs on the Thursday prior to actually the school board meeting because that's when our middle school parents association meets also that day. And this is an effort to find another avenue and another way for parents to get actively involved in the middle school and to be part of our process. They, we advertise this, these positions in our newsletter and we have explained very clearly that they are positions based right now as we begin on communication. They are not fix-it positions. Um, they are communication kinds of positions to help parents better understand what some of our workings are, and then for us also to hear from the parent voice as well too, as we begin to solve school-wide problems or address issues or think of doing things in another way. So it's a new position, there'll be glitches with it, um, but we look forward to it and we do have two parents who are gonna be filling that position, Mary Frizzell, who is the parent of a fifth grade student, and Sue Labasco, who has a sixth grade um, youngster in our school. So we look forward to their participation. 
And I would like to leave you finally with one last reminder about our conference um, tomorrow. And I think one of the most exciting things about the conference is that the keynote speech is being given by four of our students. The young ladies explained that to you. Um, Jacqueline Crane, Leslie Preddy, Anna Metzger, and Brianne Flynn. They are all members of our student council. And they have worked on taking the theme of the conference, the best practices equals caring, confident communities, and tried to answer that. So what did that mean to them as students in the Cape Elizabeth Middle School? They've put a lot of extra time and effort into the speech. We've practiced at lunchtime, um, in between times, early morning, late time. We've taken a snack a little bit of time today from a first period class with the support of the eighth grade teachers. And uh, they have worked very hard, and we look forward to them setting the conference off in the right foot. And with that, I think that about wraps up what's new and exciting at the middle school. Any and, questions? And that starts at, is it 3 in the afternoon? Actually, um, the, there, there's the, been, you know, being middle school, you've got to be flexible here, and this was a time thing. Um, registration is going to be from 3.30 to 4, and the actual conference will begin at 4 o'clock. And the keynote speakers will be at 4? They will be first. They will go from about 4 to 4.15, and then the sessions start at 4.20. Thanks. Other, other questions for um, Nancy? Is the conference such that you can come and go? Uh, the conference is such that you certainly can come and go, Mr. O. Um, absolutely, you can. And um, you just come into the main entrance of the middle school, and there will be a section there that will tell you what's going on right at that time. And you can find sessions to drop in on or to just walk by and sort of get a general feel for what's going on. You do not have to stay the entire time. The conference goes from 4 to 8 p.m. Other questions for Nancy? Thank you. Thank you. We move on now to committee reports, uh, the first uh, being the finance subcommittee that met tonight. Uh, the finance committee met briefly this evening. Uh, the major topic was a request from the high school for some additional uh, clerical time. Um, Pete Dawson uh, requested additional two and a half hours a week uh, to work with the attendance uh, uh, program and, and so forth and also a, a maximum of five hours per week uh, as assistance to the uh, instrumental music director for clerical work and so forth. Uh, the main office one has an estimated cost of about $800 for the rest of the year, and uh, the instrumental music one has a maximum of about $1,500 for the rest of the year. The finance committee uh, did approve those uh, requests, and that's it for the finance meeting tonight. Thanks, Keith. Um, Excuse me, Josh, can I ask yeah. uh, Keith a question? Back in the superintendent's report and the notes that we just uh, approved, it said that uh, we're going to make a decision as to the amount of funds we'll have available for sabbatical leaves. Has that been determined, what the amount is? Where, where are you seeing this, John? Uh, no, it's on 6A under superintendent's report. The next step for the board is to notify applicants by November 1 regarding the availability of funds to support sabbatical leaves for the next year. I think it was. Have we done that? We have. It was, and it was not um, so much to identify an amount, but to identify the number of sabbaticals that we, that we could, could potentially fund. And by contract, it's up to four, and that's right. essentially what we approved. <coughs> We approved that we would go up to four. Up to four based on merit of the proposal. So we're saying we have the availability of the funds to do four if we approve four. If you approve four, you would have to then put those funds into to next year's budget. It, it would, that, right. right. Thank you. All set on that? Yep, thank you. Um, policy subcommittee. Policy yeah, subcommittee met last week. Uh, we have taken upon ourselves the rather large task of looking at fundraising by booster groups, both athletic and co-curricular. Our plan is to have in the very near future a meeting with the administrators and uh, community service folks, uh, a background informational meeting to take it from there. Uh, we will be accepting input from everyone in the community on this um, to craft some sort of policy that puts uh, some sense and logic into fundraising uh, 
in the community for the schools and the various school activities. That's all we've essentially worked on. We do have another, a number of other policies in the hopper. Um, we are expecting uh, some interesting uh, policy proposals from the student council over at the high school. I look forward to that. Um, and we will be meeting again on December 16th, excuse me, December 14th. Nope, I was right the first 16th. time. <laughs> Thursday, December 16th in the William H. Jordan Conference Room at 8.30 a.m. And for the members of the committee, I have uh, a pile of the information available for you that we discussed at that last meeting. Haven't made the copies yet, but it's available. Great. Okay, thank you. Um, unfinished business. Next on the agenda. I guess all of our finish, business has been finished, and so we'll move, move on to new business, consideration of the superintendent's nominations to athletic fee positions. I'd like to nominate the following individuals for athletic fee position. Um, Laura Pregan, assistant coach Nordic skiing at the high school. John Casey, eighth grade basketball at the middle school. Wayne Bridgham, middle school basketball expansion team. Sarah Ozick, Alpine Skiing, and Fern Cloutier, Assistant Ice Hockey. Okay, is there um, a motion? Yes. I Kevin. move that we accept the superintendent's recommendations for athletic uh, coaching positions. Okay, second, Jim, any discussion? I just had a question of Keith. Uh, Keith Fern Clucci, the uh, assistant hockey nominee, is also a state trooper, and I've heard that he has plans on changing the plexiglass in the front of our team's penalty box to bars. Is that correct? <laughs> <laughs> okay. My understanding, we don't need the bars. Okay. <laughs> Other questions? Um, seeing none, uh, all those in favor? And 7-0. Uh, consideration of the superintendent's nominations to co-curricular fee positions. There are three positions uh, to be considered. One is Julie Salikas, uh, co-advisor of the class of 2000. David Perry, department head of uh, world languages at the high school. And Peter Bloom for the position of technical director. Is there a motion? Jim? I move that we approve the superintendent's uh, nominations for the uh, co-curricular positions. Second. Marie, thanks. Um, uh, comments on this? All those in favor? 7-0. Um, that concludes our meeting for this evening. Um, just want to review some dates to remember. Uh, school board uh, workshop meeting. Uh, the, uh, Tom spoke about this earlier. It's November 30th. It has been changed from, I think it was the 23rd to the 30th. And uh, just so that we all know what we're talking about there, um, it's going to be at 7 p.m. at the high school library. The topic is facilities, which is one of the three goal areas established by the board. Um, we're talking about facilities planning, projections, uh, certain programmatic issues that have implications for space in each of the buildings. And this does include um, kindergarten and the kindergarten facilities. So that those who are interested in that discussion, this is kind of the, where this gets melded into uh, some of the work that the board is doing for this um, school year. Finance subcommittee meeting is December 14th. Um, at 6.30 in the William Jordan Conference Room, followed by the regular school board meeting um, at 7.30 here in the council chambers, um, and the school board policy subcommittee um, uh, meeting, as Kevin said, is on Thursday, December 16th at 8.30 in the morning um, at the, in the William Jordan Conference Room. Um, yeah. Uh, I just wanted to ask Tom if before the workshop that we could get a package of whatever data that we have available already, uh, you know, projections and oh, class okay, sizes yes. and that type of thing for, the, for that. Thank you. Okay. Um, you're, and you're talking about the workshop? The workshop, yeah. For the uh, 30th. Okay. Um, that's it for dates to remember. Um, I need a, a motion for adjournment. So moved by Kevin, seconded by Keith. All those in favor? 7-0. Good evening and have a good evening. Good night.